Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Motivate You. The Winner Circle here, your host, June Archer. My guest today, MC extraordinaire, executive extraordinaire. This guy, I would have to say, he is probably genius. Um, big brother, he's a guru, a practitioner of his field at the highest level. And um, you guys might remember him from third base. You might even remember him for being the iconic guy who brought us the legendary Nasir Jones. Please welcome to the show, MC Search. Big bro, how are you, man? I'm good, man. June, good to see you, brother. How are you? Man, I woke up this morning and just super excited to jump into this interview with you. I want to I want to start back to the top, man, really quickly, because we don't have a lot of time, but there's a lot of meat to cut through. Uh, for you, man, being a pillar of hip hop at that time and being able to look back, how do you feel about your contribution to hip hop? It's humbling. It's, um, you know, it's, I feel very privileged and I feel very honored that, you know, the men and women in the five boroughs of New York City allowed me to participate in a culture that was uniquely theirs. And um, I was never treated as an outsider. I mean, I was told more than one time I was a guest of hip hop, but I was never treated as an outsider. Um, I, I, as I think about it, I, I think of, you know, I was allowed to do the dishes and I was allowed to sit at the table, but I couldn't put my feet up on the couch. Um, <laughs> And uh, I had a lot of uh, incredible memories of seeing, you know, what became the music business, uh, especially rap music business, grow and mature and um, from the very early starts of hip hop. So, um, or rap music, I should say. Um, so very humbled, man. I, I, I'm very, very fortunate to still be here, to still be a part of it, to still recognize talent, uh, to still be in some way, shape or form part of uh, the newer waves of talent that are coming in. And um, yeah, man, I just think humble is, is the word that best describes how I see my journey. And you've had the, the privilege and honor of working with, being on tour with the likes of Run DMC, LL Cool J, the list goes on and on. I would be remiss if I started to name everyone uh, that you had the opportunity to just be in the environment. Has there been an artist, and I'm certain there's more than one, but can you take me to a particular gem or a conversation that maybe a Rakim might've dropped on you or uh, Chuck D might've dropped on you that you can share with us today, those who are watching and listening, that can help them get through whatever it is that they're trying to get through, that they can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel, that they can take what you were taught or been given and try to use that in their journey right now. Yeah, I think the the, the biggest lesson I learned was um, put keep your pride uh, to the side uh, and keep your ego at the door. I remember being on the road with um, Public Enemy and I used to really enjoy uh, going to the side of the stage just before sound check to see the, the lineup, you know, see who's on the show. And we were in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I saw that the lineup was, you know, you know, Digital Underground, Queen Latifah, Ghetto Boys, Third Base. And then it said Public Enemy and Two Live Crew. And I was like, that's weird. Like, this is the PE tour, like this is their tour. Why is two live crew closing the show? It has to be a mistake. It has, something has to be wrong. And I, and I walked over to Chuck D and I uh, said, Chuck, I, I think they made a mistake on the lineup. It says that two live crew is closing tonight. And he said, nah, no, no mistake. And I started puffing my chest up. I'm like, nah, you're public, you're Chuck G. Like, what, <laughs> yo, bump, two live crew, the, you know, He's like, search, watch, stop talking and watch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we all went out, killed it. You know, public enemy comes out. That's one W's flavor on top. Of I mean, crowd going crazy. Crazy. I mean, and you know, and, and it's like 25,000 people, you know, crazy. 
And I'm, I'm like, how, what am I going to learn here? Like, I'm, I'm about to watch two live crew brick in front of 25,000. There's no way you can follow the great public enemy. And all of a sudden, Baton Rouge's finest come through the sides of the stage. And I'm not talking about one or two sheriffs. I'm talking about like 30. And I'm starting to like, and here comes the guys and Luke and Marquise and a bunch of you know thick females from Miami, half naked. And as soon as they get on the stage, I had never heard an audience that loud ever. Like whatever decibels they gave me and Latifah and Ghetto Boys, they saved whatever they had left for two live crew. And Luke just went on stage and did exactly this. Hey, Baton Rouge police on the side of the stage. They ain't going to let us say our fucking lyrics, so you got to say them. Hey! And the whole, we want to pull us out! And the crowd, yo, and they started doing a dance I'd never seen before. They started doing like, like fucking, like, um, like, um, ring, like, um, musical chairs, but like 10,000 people like swinging around chairs. And I'm like, oh my, God, this is the craziest shit. And the cops are just waiting. They're just waiting for them to say one bad word. And it was like, oh, let's call our next record. Ooh, do it bad. And I mean, they never said a lyric, one, not one lyric. And the crowd, I, and the, and wait, I mean, the bananas. Public, and I we and they left. I mean, they didn't even stick around. They were gone. Two live crew next city. And I went to Chuck and he said, and I said, wow. And he said, search. Leave your ego at the door. Hardest band closes. It doesn't matter where you are, hardest band closes. Wow. And um, so I would say that to say to young artists or young executives or people trying to Get their foot in the door in any way, shape, or form in this business. Leave your pride at the side. Be proud of what you do. And, and I think people mistake pride and ego. Be proud of what you do. Be proud of what you can accomplish. Have pride in your work. But don't allow it to cloud your judgment when it comes to you and the next man and the next woman in terms of your value and in terms of the process of understanding where your value sits. Sometimes you got to let the next man and the next woman take the lead so that you can benefit. And I learned the same thing from Big Daddy Kane. You know, we have this podcast with him now that did I ever tell you the one about podcasts? And he talks about in the podcast how when he was doing his tour, Taste of Chocolate, and he had us all on the road. I'm talking about, you know, Queen Latifah, Digital Underground, you know, all of us, third base. You know, even a young Jay-Z was on watching the whole show every night, MC Light. You know, he made sure we all had the same level. You know, typically, like, before, if you went on the road with, like, an R&B act or another act, your, your levels were lower because the main act always had their levels higher. Right. He didn't, he didn't play that. We all had the same levels because he wanted the audience to have an amazing experience from the first act to the last. Um, so that's another another thing I learned. You guys, as, as as third base, tread some waters in terms of hip hop and, and the culture, and put everything on the line. To like you said, you were able to come in, wash the dishes, have a seat at the table. Do you feel any way embarrassed for where we are as a nation uh, when it comes to black, white, Hispanic, polka dot? I feel like we didn't have those things searched back then. We had the music. We held on to the music. The music spoke for itself. But the last administration, and this may be coming from an I statement, felt like we tore apart those things that brought us together, even if we had differences. How do you feel moving forward? And how do you feel about those relations that may have been strained, uh, might have been strained because of the last administration? Yeah, I mean, listen, um, the last administration was an embarrassment, not only to this country, but to the world. Um, you know, I, I have friends of mine, just like you do, June, who don't live in the U.S., who would ask me the same thing, which is, how the fuck did you guys elect this fucking meatball? 
Like, how did you elect this? How, how did that even happen? And I'll, and I'll share with you a story. I have a, I have a dear friend of mine who I live, who lives down here. We're about three or four age, years different in age, but different. He, he comes from Queens. I come from Queens, not a rap dude. You know, certainly at the time was a Republican. I am not a Republican. I don't identify by any party, but I certainly don't identify as a Republican. Um, and right after Obama was about to leave office, he and I had a real heated conversation about the fact that we needed uh, someone in government who understood business. Um, because his feeling was that Obama, although he was a great president and a great social leader, he wasn't a great president for the uh, small business guy like himself. And Obamacare was just a, a disaster in terms of what it did in terms of his bottom line and how he ran his business. He had a bunch of, of businesses and had about two to 300 employees. And um, he gave some significant money to Trump super PAC, like significant money, five figures, hmm. uh, because he believed before Trump was high, uh, elected. And I do want to say that I was going to make, Trump wasn't elected. He was hired. Like he was hired. Like he was in fucking, he was, I see that he wasn't elected. He was hired. People who wanted a CEO, they didn't elect a president. They hired a president. Mm -hmm. um, but he was all for it. Like anything he could do to help. And it, it, this is one of my favorite stories. So, you know, the miracle that happened that Trump gets elected about six months later, I come into my man's business and he's barking on somebody. I mean, barking. I don't give a fuck. I will sue you. Fuck you. I want every fucking dollar you owe me. Fuck you. And I think he's talking to a vendor because, you know, he runs a service business. I mean, he is barking. I mean, I've never seen him this hot in my life. Talking about suing, getting the, I mean, getting the police involved, you know, hands out. And his name is Alan. I said, Alan, you know, what's going on? He said, man, that was that fucking super pack. I want every fucking penny that I gave them. Those motherfuckers lied to me. They lied to me about what that piece of shit is. They lied to me about what the fucking piece of shit was going to do for this country. And I'm telling them I want every fucking dollar back. And he's no longer a Republican. He's an independent. He left the party. Wow. Wow. So that's just an indication to me of what that piece of shit did to this country. And that's not somebody from our ilk. That's not even somebody right. from our culture. That's a dude who doesn't even understand hip hop. So if a motherfucker like that, who is a, I mean, born and bred red, can see the lies, can see the deceit and see what it did to him. Imagine what it did for people like us. Charleston, there's good people on both sides. I mean, June, July, January 6th, I mean, there will be a healing process. Although, you know, unfortunately, Congress is not going to let it happen. You know, those pieces of shit on the other side are not even going to uh, prosecute those 430 people that not only disgraced our country, but disgraced the, the halls of democracy. Um, But there's going to be a healing process. But if anything, for me, it, it makes me realize that wherever we thought we were, we are not. Mm. Um, and wherever we thought we were with Obama, we were not. Um, all Obama did was pacify an underlying hatred, an underlying uh, demonstrative behavior between people of understanding and lack of understanding people of education and people of growth and want to see balance and people that are just angry and bitter and broke and spiritually bankrupt and emotionally bankrupt. And I think that that was clearly evident. And I don't know, I would love to see Biden and Kamala Harris start a process of healing start a process of reparation. And I'm not just talking about slavery reparation. I'm talking about peaceful reparation. Mm. I'm talking about there needs to be something that's bigger and more impactful 
not important because I believe that reparation for slavery is probably the most important thing we need to do to start a healing process between the black community and, and government, period. But beyond that, there needs to be a peaceful resolution of reparation. There needs to be identification of where these hate groups are and how we remove them from wherever they are, how we not only isolate them, but how we nullify them, how we take away their rights. Um, I just think that there's a lot of work to do. And um, to me, you know, this is Yusef Hawkins magnified times a million. I mean, you know, it, it hasn't changed, bro. You know, we need 22 different versions of Fight the Power. Little Baby's version, it's bigger than black and white. It's, we need to change the whole way of life. It ain't going to happen overnight. I mean, he, to me, those lyrics are so poignant, you know, that a young man can share those feelings um, with this generation. I hope it's just as impactful as Fight the Power was. I, I love what you said, Serge, because to me, it, it sums it up properly. This isn't. This isn't a black and white situation to rectify. It's a black versus the government situation. Yeah. And I think that's where our ideas, our ideals crisscross. As you're saying, no, well, white people got to fix this. It's, it's not all white people, Serge. It's, it's the government. It's, it's the things that were in place yeah. to belittle, demean, hold back black people. So I, I love how you said that and how you put I mean, that. our tour, our first tour, third base tour was called Unity. It was a Unity tour. And it's, we said, in the, in the back of the shirt said, it's not about black and white, it's about wrong and right. And, and yeah. that sums it up the best. That yeah. sums it up the best. Uh, I want to talk about, because you, you made your mark with, with third base, but did you think, I want to talk about Nas really quickly. Did you ever think when you brought that young man, uh, to the forefront of the culture that he would have been as good and would have made his mark on hip hop in the culture for so long and be a pillar. Because as an A&R, as, as an executive, you, you see something, we have eyes and ears that see something, a little glimmer of something, this person looks like a star, but does, does that person look like an icon? Do they look like legacy? How do you feel about what you brought to the table and what he has done and how proud are you of Nas? Yeah, I mean, the, the short answer is yes. I mean, mm -hmm. I my, my conversation with, you know, every label I met with was, he is going to be the greatest MC of our generation. And that's how I started every conversation. The second I heard Main Source Breaking Adams, track nine, I think it is, Live at the Barbecue. Second I Class. heard that young man, Classic. Streets Disciple, my rap's a trifle. I shoot slugs from my brain just like a rifle. Stampede the stage. I leave the microphone split. Play pretty toughy while I'm on some pretty tone shit. Verbal assassin, my architect pleases. When I was 12, I went to hell for nothing. Jesus. Jesus. Nasty Nas is a rebel to America. Police murderer, I'm causing hysteria. My troops roll up with a strange force. I was locked in a cage and let out by the main source. Swimming in women like a lifeguard. Put on a bulletproof. I strike hard. Kidnap the president's wife without a plan and hang in like the Ku Klux Klan. I meld mics to the sound waves over. Before stepping to me, you'd rather step to Jehovah. <laughs> Slamming MCs on cement because verbally, I'm iller than an AIDS patient. I move swift and uplift the rhyme, shooting gif while I riff and rhyme. Rapping sniper, speaking real words. My thoughts react like Steven Spielberg's. Poetry attracts, paragraphs punch hard. My brain is insane. I'm out to lunch, God. Science is, my raps are toxic. My voice box locks and it spans like a rocket. I mean, the second I heard that, I still get goosebumps. My, my hair still stand up on my, my, um, my forearms. I just knew, he just knew. And I didn't know I was gonna be involved in him. I just knew he was gonna be the greatest. Like, there's, like me and Kane talked about it also. And Kane talks about it on the podcast. Did I ever tell you the one about podcasts? How when he first heard Kaz Ron. He said, uh, everything, he just threw away his rhyme book because he was like, yeah, everything I'm doing is wrong. Totally changed the way he rhymed. Totally wow. changed his rhyme pattern. And the thing that was so cool about the conversation on the podcast about Kaz and Kane 
is that Cain started, just like I spit those rhymes from 30 years ago, Cain started spitting rhymes that he heard Kaz do on a cassette tape from, you know, Soundview in 1978 when he was 14, like he heard it yesterday. Um, and that was kind of very much the same kind of process that, you know, I had and, and, I, uh, and I felt in, uh, in, in hearing Nas. So when I had the opportunity, the, the blessing really to have Nas come to me in a studio session and ask me for his help, like, how are you not gonna help the greatest of all time? How are you not gonna help? And how, not only are you not gonna help, how are you not gonna make sure that he's taken care of and that he never has to worry ever about the things that you had to worry about as an artist? I've never seen a royalty check from Def Jam. It wasn't until Drink Champs and all the visibility we're getting about promoting the podcast that Def Jam all of a sudden started sending me fucking royalty statements. By the way, that say I'm still unrecouped, which I don't understand how that's fucking possible, but whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't understand even how that's fucking possible, but whatever. Um, I, I wanted to make sure he was taken care of for the rest of his life. Fuck one album. I was only involved in two albums which was my agreement to him. Um, and uh, I just wanted to make sure he never had a problem. And the job well done, brother. You, you've been an inspiration to many of us, myself included. So I thank you for that. I want to talk about this new deal, Orchard Sony, the Timeless Podcast, and did I ever tell you the one about? Uh, what was the inspiration behind that, man? And, and where do you see this going? I mean, the inspiration was real simple, man. I, You know what? I saw the storytelling being shared in podcasting. And I just, like you, June, I was there. Like, you know, I was there at the battles at Albee Square Mall between, you know, MCs like Biz and, you know, Sir I Boo from the Eternal Force and Lord Taru. And, you know, and, and just, and, and, you know, and it wasn't just about the rhymes, right? It was about the environment the wind, the cars, the sound, the noise of the girls, the dudes going, oh, when, the, uh, you know. And I would hear these stories being told and they were flat to me. They were just flat. They were just conversations that were had between the MC and the audience. And I was like, look, I gotta really step the zhuzh up on this shit. If we're gonna do this right, the zhuzh gotta be right. So I spent about a year and a half understanding and understanding the drivers and headphones. And I met with different engineers from different headphone companies and understanding that because um, I wanted to create immersive sound design. So when you heard the Big Daddy Kane podcast and he started talking about the Kung Fu flicks and 42nd Street, you felt like you were on the deuce with him. Mm -hmm. Like when, he's, when he went into K-Food, not K-Food, when he went into K-Food and bought a 40, you heard what that sounded like, what the fucking cart sounded like in, in the aisle. Um, we wanted to create immersive sound design. Um, one of the parts in the, in the uh, podcast, he talks about being in fourth grade and being in, in the park at PS191 and opening up a, a warm you know, can of Schlitz. And so we took our sound engineers on December of 2019 to 191 and we recorded the kids in the park. Wow. We wanted that sound design. So that's what it's about. It's about not only allowing people like Kane to get their flowers, but for the rest of the world to be in, not just hear the story, but be involved in the story, you know? Um, so that's what Timeless is about. And, you know, when I met with The Orchard and I met with those guys, they understood my vision. They understood what I was trying to do. And I told Sony, I said, yo, I'm going to turn Sony into the sound of New York. That's what we used to call Sony back in the days. Sony was the sound of New York. When you got a Sony radio, we turn that shit into the sound of New York. That's what I'm going to do with them. Now, I want, there's another project right off the bat of that, Breaking Anonymity. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that, so That sounds pretty good. It's a 12-part uh, yeah. step uh, program to... Yeah, so basically Breaking Anonymity is a podcast, and all of our podcasts are in, in immersive sound design. You know, Breaking Anonymity is about breaking the stigma of a 12-step program, breaking the stigma of what it means to be in a program. I've been uh, 10 years clean now. Um, but it wasn't so much my drug of choice 
that um, was my problem. My problem was me. Hmm. And what people don't realize, a lot of people don't realize about um, a 12 step program, no matter what it is, gambling, sex, eating, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, is it's not just about the addiction. It's about why the addiction exists. Right. So we talk to people, we talking, you know, we talk to Danny boy from house of pain. We talk to Frank Gallagher from the talking heads. You know, we talk to all these at slain and, you know, we talk to people about their highs and their lows, but more importantly, what the program did to help them kind of work through it. And we want to give people the opportunity to break through the stigma of maybe they're a little concerned about going to a 12 step room. Maybe they're embarrassed or maybe there's a little pride involved or, so we wanted to give them a podcast that gives them an opportunity to hear it from people that might sound like them, might feel like them. Um, and also give them some phone numbers to reach out to so that, you know, when they're ready, uh, they can go and, and get the help they need. That's dope. You've also become, and you've been getting busy, the chief, Creative console for the interactive app VidSig. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, I love this platform. So what what has happened over the last six months? I'd say um, between you know uh, I got involved in Clubhouse and I was an early adopter on Clubhouse and our room, New Money Moguls, is like the seventh or eighth largest room on Clubhouse right now. We got like forty thousand members. And we started a room called the Problem Solvers because I was going into rooms on Clubhouse and I was hearing a lot of our contemporaries, June, and they're talking about, you know, the problems and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's bickering and complaining. Yeah, I'm about do it. Like, stop. Right. Fucking, just do it. Like, figure it out. Stop, do it. Compl stop complaining. This, yeah, this like, is a solution you know, for every problem. Everything. Facto. That's a facto. <laughs> and and not only that, like, the, the things that I started seeing in other rooms was like, oh, man, she... Not only am I a fan of hers, but she gets it. And, oh, he gets it. And he, and then they started reaching out to me when I started. So I said, you know what? Let's find a, a club where we can do this room to problem solve this. And this kid, Paris Pullum, who I'm such a fan of, he created a, a club called New Money Moguls. Every Tuesday at 730, we do a room called the Problem Solvers where we solve problems. Don't talk about it. Here's the answer. Here's the solution. Oh, you got social media problem. Here's the solution. Oh, you need a connection. Here's a connection. Even in some places, if we love your business enough, we all invest. We'll invest in your business. Like money. Forget about time, money. So the CEO of VidSig came to me and said, hey, I got a problem. I need your help. And I went on the platform and I said, yo, this is dope because I've got at any one point, man, somewhere between three and 400 DMs in my mm -hmm. Instagram of people that want my help. And I, I don't have the time. Um, so VidSig allows me the ability to meet with these people. And I have a menu, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a menu. I tell people what I charge. Here it is in black and white. If you need my help, here it is. And I've had maybe 40 or 50 people already that want to hire me and schedule time. So uh, I just became the chief creative consultant and I'm bringing in other people like myself. Proud to say DJ Domingo, super producer, worked with Big Pun, worked with Capone Noriega. He's now on there talking to people about music. I'm gonna have a really big announcement next week. A very famous fashion designer is gonna join VidSig. So it's really about creating opportunities for people like that who have so many people reaching out that want to connect with them and want their help and are trying to figure out ways to help them. Another project that I'm super excited about that we're gonna announce right now, man, that's gonna help artists. And you are big at helping artists and getting them to the next level. 4MC, let's, let's, let's touch that real quick. Yeah, so, yeah, so one of the things we did with, um, Look, I'm just going to keep it a buck with you. One of the things I discovered in my recovery is that the thing that I felt like might have been my biggest hindrance is me. Um, everything was searchlight, searchlight this, searchlight that. It was all about me, 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 me. And I realized that you know, once I had children and once I had a wife um, who's been with me for 30 plus years, that it's no longer about me. It's a we thing. 
So I changed the name of the company to 4MC. The four M's are the name of my myself and my children. And the C is my wife who runs the company. So we started a distribution company called 4MC Multimedia. We work on documentaries, we work on other things, but more importantly, we just you know do a distribution deal. We did a distribution deal with The Orchard. And a lot of people want me to put out music, want me to be involved in their music, want me to help their music. So through VidSig, um, we created a platform called Music Mondays. That's gonna start um, as soon as this week. And basically, you can go on VidSig, you can download the app, you can go to vidsig.net, and you can download the app, and you can just go to MC Search and schedule a time. And it's real simple. Play two of your hottest joints. If I like them, we're gonna offer you a distribution deal, and you'll be able to put your music out to the world. If I don't like them, I'm going to tell you why I don't like them. And you can always come back and continue to make better music or make different music or make music, challenge yourself. Or maybe it's just not right. Maybe it's just not the right fit. You keep it moving. But if it is the right fit, we're going to offer you a distribution deal and we're going to help you put out your music. That's a beautiful thing. 4MC, you guys got to check that out. Search, you're doing a lot, man. I, I, I can't be any more proud, man. Uh, you being the guru and being the big bro. Um, I've been playing this game, man, and it's time to play University of Dope with the big brother, MC Search. So, listen, unpopular opinions are welcome. The game is University of Dope. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple questions here. Okay. Unpopular opinions are welcome. You have the opportunity to only pass once. Okay. Got only it. pass once. So, here it is. The most influential rap song of all time is it A, The Message, Grandmaster Flash and Furious Five? Is it B, Rapper's Delight, Sugar Hill Gang? C, Planet Rock, African Bambada, and the Soul Sonic Force? Or D, Sucker MCs, Run DMC? I am going to, for me personally, the answer is D, Sucker MCs. You're stranded on a deserted island. Which album would you listen to? A, Black on Both Sides, Most ne Deaf. Ooh. B, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, Lauryn Hill. C, Three Feet High Rising, De La Soul. Or D, The Chronic by Dr. Dre. So this one's tough because I helped Miss Fat Booty become a number one record on uh, on radio. I worked that record. Shout out to the Raucous family. Wow. I I'm going to have to go with uh, Three Feet High Rising, De La. All right, all right. If these four MCs were on the same track today, who would come out on top, sir? Stop. Would it be a, Stop. LL Cool J. Stop. B, Stop. Say less. Say less. C. B. Rock him. My favorite, <laughs> greatest MC of all time. Say less. Greatest diss song of all time is it A. Hit him up. Tupac. B. Ether Nas. C. Take over Jay Z. Or D. No Vaseline. Ice Cube. So obviously, you know, my I have a personal favorite here, and I think you know why. Um, I love that in Takeover, I get mentioned, even though it's incorrect. So uh, I'm going to obviously go with B, Ether, Nas. All right, all right. If someone wanted to experience hip hop for the first time, what album would you give them? A, Low End Theory, Chop Call Quest, B, Ooh. Enter the Wu-Tang, C, Straight Outta Compton, NWA, or D, Paid in Full, Eric B and Rakim? Wow. Um, so this is going to be unpopular opinion. I love Pain in Full, but Chinese Arithmetic may be the worst DJ record ever made. Um, <laughs> so if I could do Pain in Full and take off Chinese Arithmetic, it would be D, but I know I can't do that. So I'm going to go with A, Low End Theory. All right. All right. If you had to erase one person from hip hop history, who would it be? Would it be A, Queen <laughs> oh B, God. MC Light, C, Lauren Hill, or D, Missy, Mr. Mina Elliott? Uh, there is no E, uh, can't answer that. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Yo. think I've ever seen you speechless. Yo. I don't think I've ever seen you speechless. And we're That's... only getting started. Yo, that is, this is a fucked up card. If you could erase one person... <laughs> Yo, none of them. Like, there's no reason you can't erase any of them. Wow. Man. You can only pass once, but I'll give you a clue. I wouldn't pass on this one. <laughs> Damn. You can only pass once? Can only pass once. 
Uh, um, I'm going to have to pass on that. Just I, I got to pass. I'm going to have to. Oh, man, I got to pass. All right. It's all right. No, 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 no. I, I, oh, man. OK, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to tell you who it is for me. And it goes to who I can't I just who I could not live without. Hip hop history. Ah, uh, you could talk wow. it out like like who wants no, to be no, a no, 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 no. Because here's the thing: because Queen Latifah, I mean, Wrath of My Madness, it, and just her is just. But MC Light, Light is a rock. I'm in, I'm in a, <laughs> I'm in a video. Lauren Hill, you know, just her big cap rhyme alone when she said, you know, I could thug it out and still woman enough to have your babies. Missy, her just. You know what? I hate to say it, but I'm going to go with Missy. All right. All right. And I'm Best sorry, Missy. Missy. Soundtrack. I'm sorry. I love you, Missy. <laughs> it's all fun. This is all fun. No, I know. And I know, like, Missy's not watching this. I don't know why I feel like I'm important enough to tell <laughs> Missy. I apologize to her. But I love you, Missy. I love we you, We love Mona. you, Missy. I love That's you. That's my label mate. That's my label mate on Alexa. So I, I love I, Missy. It's, it's terrible. I'm Best going to hell for that one, by the way. A, get rich or die trying. B, above the rim. C, eight mile. Or D, Oof. juice. Uh, D, juice. Stay woke. Best politically conscious song. Is it A, fight the power? B, F the police? C, hip hop? Or D, Umi Oof. says? Oof. Fight the power. Best film with a rapper in it. Is it A, belly? B, paid in full? C, pick any Fast and Furious. <laughs> Except for the like, black one, which I rule, uh, or D, set it off. Wow. Um, honestly, this is easy for me. It's uh, it's belly, and I'll tell you why. Because, and shout out to hype on this. I know how difficult it was to get belly to the screen. Mm -hmm. Like I know the fight he had with that company to make that film happen. I know how hard he fought to make that film a reality. So that's why I say belly. Dope answer. If you had to erase one of these from hip hop history, who would it be? A, Curtis Blow, B, EPMD, C, Kumo D, or D, Slick Rick? So again, I know this is, you know, again, uh, an erase one person again, but for me, this is really easy because um, I was never really a fan and it's Curtis Blow. One gotta go. But I'm sorry, Curtis. I'm sorry. I love you, Curtis. I do. I love you, Curtis. I just, I'm not a fan. I'm really not a fan. But I love you. I love you. Brought so much to the culture, Curtis. I don't know why I feel like it's important for me to talk to these people. I don't know why. Just trying to plead your case. Unpopular so, opinions are welcome. Yeah, well, I'm fucking going to hell for this. One got to go. Is it A, J. Cole, B, Drake, C, Kendrick Lamar, or D, Childish Gambino? I know this is going to be a totally unpopular opinion, and I'm sorry, especially because he's a fellow Jew, but I got to go with Drake. I'm sorry, Drake. <laughs> Shabbat shalom, homie. I'm sorry, Drake. Shabbat shalom. I'm sorry. I am a fan. But if I had Kendrick, J. Cole, lights, please. June, are you familiar with Lights, Please by J. Cole? Oh, are you familiar goodness. with that song? Are you, it's the greatest rap, one of the greatest rap songs of all time that probably no one knows it's in his catalog. Lights, Please, when I heard that record in 2007, 8, I just, I remember calling my homeboy, it's like, yo, this kid's about to be the greatest, one of the greatest MCs of all time. It's the same way I felt when I heard Live at the Barbecue. When I heard J. Cole's Light, Please off the warm up, I just knew. I just, it's just, you just know. There's just certain things you know, and I've every person, I, even when, when I was working at Nouveau and we were building Nouveau, I even went to his camp and I said, yo, I want to pay to redo the video because I need this video to be official, like a ref with a whistle. I need this shit to be a big video. And they thanked me. They were so nice. They were like, nah, we're happy with the video we got. I was like, Please, please let me do a nouveau version of this video. We'll pay for whatever you want. I had it like they were like, no, we're good. Thank you. He's amazing. And and Drake, I know you're a member of my tribe. I'm sorry, Drake. Shabbat shalom, homie. <laughs> but so I love childish. I love Kendrick and I love Jay. If I had, you know, Sophie's choice on that one.
All right, so little little known fact. Pete Nice graduated from Fordham. Where did you graduate from? No, he graduated from Columbia. C Columbia, okay. Yeah, I graduated from high school of music and art. <laughs> That's right, what I graduated all right, from. All right. Best Jay-Z album, Searches at A Reasonable Doubt, The Blueprint, Volume 2, Hard Knock Life, or 444? Uh, reasonable Doubt. And and let me just tell you something. If you would have had American Gangster on there, I would have picked picked American Gangster. I, I think that, that album. I think that album four 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 shouldn't even be there. Yeah, listen, don't shoot the messenger. I no, I, I, I thought I, you created I the American game. Gangster, so Dude, I, would, I, I thought would you. <laughs> I thought this was your game. Like I thought you were promoting <laughs> your own shit. Anyway, all right. listen, I just love it. I, I'm promoting these women who put it together. They're amazing. Sisters. And listen, I love, I love it. Game. It's fun. So shout Great out game. to them. Yes. $75,000 or a ticket to the Rock Nation brunch? Uh, ticket to the Rock Nation brunch. Erase one person from hip hop history. We got two more questions left. Search and we'll see how bold you are. Is it A, Swiss Beats, B, Dr. Dre, C, Pharrell, or D, Timberland? <sighs> wow. Um... Yeah, so I'm. <laughs> <laughs> who, who do you want to say sorry to now? Sir? <laughs> exactly. Right. I'm. I'm gonna have to apologize to Swiss Beats. Swiss, I'm sorry. Swiss, I'm sorry. Swiss, I love you, Egypt. Your son is a brilliant producer. You are a, pro <laughs> You're a so brilliant, be beautiful producer. family. Swiss, Swiss, I love you so. Ka I'm Yo, not. that's a Kaiser Soze moment. I'll just kill everybody. But <laughs> just, everybody. just you, yo, you want to fuck with me? How about this? I kill everybody. Everybody. But yo, everybody. I mean, just Timberland, But I mean, Timberland's just. I mean, Pharrell. The the top two there were obviously Pharrell. For me, Pharrell and and Dre. Just because I, I just the clips funeral to me is just such a slept on record. Ti, I'm serious. Like there's so many Pharrell records that just really resonate with me beyond like the obvious. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I love Swiss. I just that's that's nah, shout that's out to Swiss, to man. He yeah. he he has bigged up the culture so much. Him and Tim, yeah, uh, of course. Verses, and we we really appreciate. But him you didn't it. say you said producer though. You didn't say influencer. I did that's say a different producer. thing. Right, it's a different so, thing. Different right. thing. Yes, sir. Erase one from hip hop history, search. Who would it be? A, Nas, B, the Notorious B.I.G., C, Tupac, or D, Jay-Z? Wow. No wonder you said not to. Man, wow. 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 Okay, so definitely no to Nas. Definitely no to Jay-Z. <sighs> yeah, so it would be Tupac. MC Search, I want to thank you for playing University of Dope with me. That was dope. Um, and as we end that game, man, I'd like to ask you, man, music is a soundtrack to our lives. What song best represents your journey up to this point? Or which artist embodies your journey up to this point? Because there's so much more left for you to do, all these projects. But what song or artist embodies MC Search up to this point in, along his journey? Um, surviving the times, Nas. Mm. Dope, dope, dope. And for you, people are losing their jobs. They're trying to figure out whether to get vaccinated, trying to send their kids to school, figure out how to help their kids. What is the best piece of advice that you could give those who are watching and listening uh, today to help them get through, to motivate them, to inspire them, to live their best life and yeah. just take that leap of faith to making a better way for themselves and their family. I think my wife has a, a saying that I've adopted recently, which is how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm. Um, and it, it really, it's really resonated with me now more than ever in how we move as not only a culture, but how we move as a community. You know, if, if you're living foul and you're talking foul, then don't be surprised that foul shit happens to you. So change the way you talk, change the way you live, change the way you approach things, 
how you do everything is how you do anything and say what you mean and mean what you say. You heard it here, guys. Say what you mean, mean what you say. 4MC is coming. The oh, it's here. It's already coming. here, brother. New, 4MC new, is already new here. New music mogul on, on Clubhouse is here. Uh, Tuesday, Vince 730. Here. Yes, sir. Uh, breaking an anonymity. On this way. guy is doing everything and everything that he can to give back. To and the Big Daddy Kane culture. podcast, the Big Daddy Kane, uh, the podcast, episode seven launches, and it's the first podcast to debut and premiere in the top five on Apple Music Podcasts. So congratulations to Kane and congratulations to our whole team at the Timeless Podcast Company. They did an amazing job. That's a beautiful. I got to get Kane on the show. So we, we, we don't you go nowhere, search, because we got to make sure that we make that magic happen. That's Listen, a done that's deal. MC Search. I'm June Archer. Thank y'all for tuning in. Tell somebody you love them. It may be the last time you have an opportunity to do so. Life Facts. is short, and guess what? In 2021, life is even shorter. Be good to each other. You heard what Search said. We have to find a way to heal, and the healing begins now. I'm June Archer. Thank y'all for tuning in. God bless y'all. Far Rock, stand up.